Okay, I got several uh, requests, uh, probably since last year, I guess. Um, people start noticing the iron that I was using, uh, and it's, it's really common. Um, I just kind of wanted to go over it really quick. Um, pretty much throughout my lab, I do have uh, one Thermaltronics that's a whole unit. Uh, one of their new units, uh, it's, it's compatible with like the 500 series of the Metcal. But all the rest of my units are actually really old um, Metcal units. Um, they look a lot like this. Um, and these are beefy. Uh, basically this is all a, uh, um, I probably extruded or cast aluminum. Uh, feels like a big heat sink. It's pretty beefy for a soldering iron system. It's really simple. Basically you flip this switch on and turn it on. If you disconnect anything on the uh, iron on this particular model, the thermaltronics will automatically reset. These do not. Uh, the Metcals they actually make in several different varieties. There's a lot of 220 uh, models. Uh, this particular one is a uh, single phase uh, 115 volt AC unit. Um, these are all, all the ones that I have that I use regularly other than that one newer unit that I purchased. Um, it's going to be a uh, PS2E-01. I think the PS2E-02 is actually the, uh, the 220 version. Um, and, you know, real simple. It's basically on the back side here. Um, it's actually got a standard, you know, regular AC power cord. And it has a really fancy... Uh, RF connector that's actually a split lug connector and you tighten it down and it, it, it cinches on and it's also threaded as well. Uh, on all my irons, um, all of them are thermaltronics at this point. I don't have any uh, Metcals. Uh, when I bought, I bought a pallet of the uh, Metcal power units uh, and you know wanted to get basically new irons and I ended up buying the thermaltronics unit. Uh, and, and with various tips. Uh, one thing I'll say on these tips is they, you know, it comes with a little silicon pad and that's how you get it off. You just basically pull it out. Now on these these uh, older Metcals, when you pull that out, it'll actually come in an air condition. A lot will come on in the front and, you know, no big deal. You just swap it out. But you will actually have to turn the unit off, turn it back on to actually heat the iron. Just kind of give you an idea. Um, this is how the Thermaltronics kit comes, um, and you can kind of see there. Um, and I've got a lot of tips. Uh, some of these, most of these, are probably still Metcal tips. Um, some are new. Some I've just picked up along the way, found on eBay, what have you. Um, they last. I've really never had a tip actually wear out. Um, they last a really long time, with uh, especially with hobby use. Okay. I've also got another unit here. This is actually a, a, you know, an old Metcal. Um, I picked this up on eBay really cheap and it's, it's a fairly new unit. Um, I don't use it a whole lot as you can see from the cobwebs on the, uh, on the stand. Uh, but when you do need this, it's really quick uh, to pull parts on and off and it provides a lot of heat. It's, it's really lightweight. It's ergonomic. I don't know if you can see there this actually is flexible and you can close this you can actually I don't know if you're supposed to or not but I, I find myself sometimes you'll rotate these around if you need to um, and they still work uh, either way and as you can see the, uh, the the holder for it is kind of designed a little different I don't know if this actual holder does I know some of the other holders the thermaltronics they, they use a magnet to actually you know to cause the iron to actually not heat as much. Um, it kind of stays at a preheat state when you pull it out. Just to kind of give you an idea, I've never really grabbed either of these irons uh, and tried to use it uh, without, once it's turned on, by the time you grab the iron and are ready to, to actually use the iron, it's already hot. There's no waiting. Um, if you do uh, get the iron on your finger. Um, it's probably a heat that you've never felt before. Um, it basically that curry effect tip actually just starts applying the heat right where you're trying to cool it down on your finger. So you want to be real careful with one of these that you don't actually contact any skin. 
Uh, it hurts way worse than a normal soldering iron uh, does. And that's, that's generally what makes them better. You don't have to apply as much heat or hold the iron on the part as long. Um, it's pretty much does what you would expect every iron to do, which is, you know, you touch the part and it's instantly heated and solder's flowing, and that's pretty much what happens every time. Um, and I've done some crazy stuff down in my machine shop. I mean, I've took, uh, you know, soldered on a three sixteenth or nine sixteenth nut on top of a uh, a bolt, which I think is one of the demo videos that Metcal did. Uh, but I actually needed to do that to jig up something. Uh, and it worked, and I was really amazed at how much heat it was actually putting out. Um, but if you get the chance, pick one of these up. Uh, I know I looked this morning, you know, eBay, you know, you can pick up a power supply for 50 bucks um, on eBay. Um, you can buy a brand new Thermaltronics unit. I think they're around 470 now uh, for the whole kit. Um, they do make a lesser model. I would recommend staying with the, uh, I think it's the 500 series, um, which is their, their, their de facto standard and that's what all of my parts fit basically I can switch between Thermaltronics, Metcal um, and everything's the same but if, you get, but if you get a chance to use one of these uh, especially if you get a chance to buy one I highly recommend it it's really hard to go back to a normal iron um, I have my trusty old uh, Xtronic but the only reason this is probably even on the stand it's because it has this attached to it. Um, so that's kind of a, that's kind of the gist of what I did on this. Um, just kind of want to go over the components real quick. If, you, if you're looking at buying one of these used or new or what have you, and you're going to buy it in parts, um, the first thing you'll need is a power unit. Um, like I say, this one in particular is a PS2E-01. I think the uh, Mac Cal units is an MX500, um, and I think there's actually a model in between this and um, the newest Mac Cal. Um, there's another generation of this that you can actually get as well. Um, they're relatively easy to test. I, I haven't had to make any repairs out of the entire palette of these. Um, every single one of them worked. Uh, uh, there's actually pretty good repair material online if you actually get a bad one and you need to repair it. Um, you know, if you have one sitting around and you want to get rid of it, you know, send it my way. Um, I'll, de I'll definitely like to do a tear down and repair of one of these uh, if anybody's got one that they don't want to, uh, to fool with or, or repair. Uh, the other thing that you'll need um, is, a, is an iron, and, and you know, typically these come with cords. Uh, like I say, the Thermaltronics works great. Um, it does fit the Metcal, and these are really inexpensive. Uh, you know, 80 bucks for a very lightweight, nicely. This is super flexible, and it's really long, um, and it's really comfortable in your hand. Uh, they actually come with a. They'll come with this, and they'll actually come with a green, which I'm assuming you want to put on if you're, you know, keeping your lead free and leaded uh, iron separate. If you want this, um, I highly recommend just getting a separate power supply. Or if you get one of the new MX500s, they actually have two outputs that you can switch between the two. Um, this is a really a requirement. This is more of a luxury. Um, I don't use it very often. I, I would say over the past year, I might have used this six times. Uh, where the irons I use all the time. Okay, I just want to go over tips real quick. This is uh, something that is very difficult. Really, um, I use this most of the time and, and a lot of people are like, well, you know, you really should use a, a, a more chiseled tip. To be honest, this kind of fits the bill. You can kind of rotate it to the to the width that you need. Uh, this particular one is a STTC 137. I use this a, a lot of the time um, on anything that's through hole or just general purpose soldering. Um, this I use a lot. Um, this is basically a uh, surface mount uh, tool and generally a uh, you take your surface mount resistor or capacitor and it'll actually catch both ends um, at one time and you can pop one off really quick uh, without any issues. Um, you don't have to do any flooding or anything like that. This makes 
taking off parts way way quicker for the large uh, pen devices um, this works really well if you don't have a talon this works really well if you're if you're applying uh, putting on a new part um, you can basically do an entire side at one you know one sweep um, it reminds me a lot of TIG welding uh, basically you can just set this on the pins and kind of shift it and go um, see if I can find okay, this is uh, the tip that I generally use for uh, thin lead parts and it's actually it's not going to be real visible now but there's actually a little hoof on the end uh, that has a dimple and what that dimple does is it kind of stores some of the solder and you can actually drag solder this really well um, it, it applies really well it's really smooth so it doesn't end up bending pins as you're going across them um, but I you know I can take a big um, you know 144 pin thin package and just zip down a side, zip down a side, zip down a side, zip down a side, and be done. Um, so this is uh, this is probably the biggest place that I, you know, recognize that these uh, these type of soldering systems work way better. Um, you know, I've got uh, a Heco and uh, this Extronics, and they work okay. Um, but there's a huge difference between this type of soldering and that and, and uh, heated element type soldering. Um, one thing I want to say about the tips as well is uh, the tips are, are temperature rated. If you noticed when I held up the Metcal, there's no temperature settings. Um, and the reason for that being these curry effect uh, tips are actually designed to reach a certain temperature. Um, so you've got to be careful. Uh, I try to buy in the middle. Uh, I think there's like a 6, 700, 800 uh, degree tips. Um, and I try to stay around the 700 and that'll do lead free and, and leaded parts. Um, you know, if you're doing all lead free, you may want to up the temp or if you have a special application. Um, but you kind of, you kind of want to make sure what you're buying. Um, the part numbers are really, in my opinion, are really hard to, uh, tell what you're going to get. Uh, there's really no standard Thermaltronics has theirs. Uh, I think the way Thermaltronics does it is they have like a, a little color band that actually goes around the part. I don't think I have any here that's handy, but it'll be, yeah, I don't remember if it's on this side or this side, but they'll actually have a color uh, and they embed that in their part number. Uh, anyway, hope you liked the video. Um, if you have any questions about the Met Cal or, or anything, just let me know. Uh, if anybody's repaired one of these, I'd really like to see some videos. Um, I know one day I'll have to dig into mine. Uh, I have gotten uh, some service manual reverse engineering type stuff uh, that I've seen online that I've kind of stored back just for the day that I actually need to work on one of these. Uh, but if you have any information about what might fail or whatever, I'd be interested in knowing. And by all means, you know, if you have one of these sitting around, you're going to throw it away. Uh, get in contact with me and, and send it my way, and we'll, I'll try to tear it down on, you, on a video and uh, repair it. Thanks.